بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين الله صل على قال الله العظيم في محكم كتابه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا As we are concluding this retreat my dear brothers and sisters I would like to make my last reflection on the great, great quality of our Lord and that is His Rahmah, His Mercy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names one of these names is Al-Wadud He is Al-Wadud He is the loving one we often talk about His anger, His wrath we talk about how important for us to fear Him, which is very true. We should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His wrath. But at the same time, my dear brothers and sisters, our fear should not trump our hope in His rahm. We should also have strong faith in His rahm, in His love. Sabaqat rahmati ghadabi my rahmah trumps my anger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And what do we read in Dua Kumay? Ya sari'a al-rida. Ya sari'a al-rida. Akhfir liman la yamliku illa dua. Allah is sari'a al-rida. Quick to be pleased. Quick to be satisfied. It doesn't take me long to make him happy with me and satisfied with me. Allah does not hold grudges against his servant. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. One time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Ibrahim so high. He showed him the kingdom of heaven and earth. He was able to see everything. Allah gave him that vision that he can see through walls and ditches. He saw few people are committing sins. Two couple are committing adultery and Ibrahim was so angry may Allah punish these two couples and then he saw another two couple committing another sin and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish them Allah says wait wait Ibrahim this is not how I rule this is not how I deal with my people I don't hasten my punishment. I'm so patient with my people because I love them. You did not create them, Ibrahim. I created these people. So leave me alone. I know how to handle my people. Don't ask me to punish them. I know how to handle my people. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we leave from the camp today, inshallah, and you arrive safely home, keep that in mind that Allah loves you and that's why He invites you. That's why He cares about you. You invite me and I turn my face from you. You reach out to me and I don't accept. Sometimes I feel I, you owe me, I don't owe you. فَلَمْ يَمْنَعْ كَذَلِكَ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ لِي Despite my arrogance and my selfishness and my heedlessness, it never stopped you from continuing to reach to me. فَلَمْ يَمْنَعْ كَذَلِكَ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ لِي وَالْإِحْسَانِ إِلَيْهِ You've always been good to me. I made so many sins publicly and secretly and you have been patient with me. I transgressed so many times and you have been patient with me. You never punished me. You never hastened to punish me. You gave me chances after chances, opportunities after opportunities, because you love me. You don't hate me. You want me to come to this path. And I have told you about the story. Maybe you have heard this story from me before. It's a very telling story, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's keep this in mind, and I will conclude. When Musa alayhi salam, Moses took his people to the desert to pray for rain to come because it was a drought, <clears throat> a famine year. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
it's mustahab. He asked people to go and do salat al-istisqa, to ask Allah to send rain. So he took all his people to the desert to ask Allah to send rain, and people stopped it begging and praying and asking and never, never rain never came and Musa is getting edgy and disappointed Ilahi what happened why don't you accept our dua we've been begging you Allah reveals to him that Musa there is a guy among these people who has committed horrible horrible sins and as long as this guy is still sitting among them I'm not going to say Musa being outraged by that man who he doesn't, doesn't know who that person was. He came and he told people, there is one guy among you who had committed horrible sins and Allah is not going to send his rain till that person leaves. We ask him to leave. We ask him not to be a reason for Allah not to send his rain to us. We ask him to leave. And the man knew it was him. And now he didn't know what to do. If he leaves, people will kill him, will eat him up. He will be so embarrassed and will expose before thousands of people. If he stays, Allah will not send his rain. What did he do? He did the right thing. He says, Ilahi, Musa doesn't know. These people don't know. You know what I did. I repent to you. I seek for forgiveness. You forgive me and don't expose me before these people. And I pledge I will change. This will be life experience for me, life changing experience. You send the rain and I pledge to you that I will change. And Allah immediately sends rain. And Musa is so surprised, stunned. Ilahi, I didn't see any person leaving. You said you're not going to send rain till that person leave leaves and I didn't see any person leaving. What happened? Allah says, look, that person repented and I accepted his repentance. And I sent my ring. Musa says, Ilahi, out of curiosity, I want to know him, who that person is. Allah says, look Musa, when he was sinning, I did not expose him. Now that he repented, you think I would expose him? No. I was, I was patient with him when he was sinning. I never exposed him to people. I did not even let you know who he is. Now that he repented and he sought my forgiveness, you think I will expose him? I will not do this. My Rahmah will not allow that. This is Allah, my dear brothers and sisters. He's so loving, so caring. He loves you. That's why he brought you here. That's why he let Hajj Hassan to build this, Hajj Hassan to build this camp. So he changes your life through these people. So take this opportunity, my dear brothers and sisters. Be consistent with your salah. Make a pledge with Allah now, not with Hassan al Ghazmini, not with Hajj Hassani, with Allah. Say, now that Allah has given me this opportunity, I will take it wholeheartedly. I'm going to pray every day. I'm not going to miss my prayer. Sisters, if there is one or two or five or ten of you who don't put hijab, take this opportunity and say, I'm going to be stronger than the shaitan and stronger his temptation. And Allah has given me the opportunity today to be with him. I will choose to be with him. I'm not going to be with the shaitan. And I'm going to put hijab on. Make that a pledge now before the shaitan would come and try to persuade you not to. Make that a pledge with Allah. Say, Allah has given me this golden opportunity. He loves me. That's why he wants me to put hijab. Not that he wants to restrict my movement. This is an opportunity that may not happen. Now your heart is so soft and open for his rahmah. Take advantage of it. And I say to myself as well, you take advantage of this opportunity. Stay on the right path. Don't be arrogant. Don't be selfish, don't show off. I preach to myself as well, my dear brothers and sisters, as I preach to you. We all need to surrender our will and submit our heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like one of you, God forbid, when he goes through operation bypass, he submits the most precious part of his body, which is his heart, and the heart of the surgeon, because he trusts him. That's how we need to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We trust Him with our heart. We give Him our heart. We tell Him, Adali, 
You lead my way. You lead my intention. You lead my path in my life. And you lead my life. And I follow you. I follow your faith. I follow your light. I wish you all the best, my dear brothers and sisters. And I hope, inshallah, there will be a life of joy and a blessing awaiting all of you. My dear brothers and sisters, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.